Hi guys, so in this lesson I want to look at L'Hopital's rule. Now this is a very famous rule in mathematics and calculus. Um, f and it comes from, well, L'Hopital comes from the French mathematician L'Hopital, who, well, I only just found this out myself when I was researching for this lesson. Uh, he didn't actually come up with the rule. It was Bernoulli who came up with it and seemingly... As far as I can tell, L'Hopital paid him for the rights to the rule and used it. And he was the first person to publish it. Hence, he was the person who got to call it what he wanted. And he chose L'Hopital's rule. So what it is, well, this is the rule to begin with. And what it's used for is for finding limits when we have an indeterminate form. Now, indeterminate forms are these forms here, zero over zero or infinity over infinity or zero times infinity or infinity minus infinity. Now, there's a few others, but these are the ones where we'll use L'Hopital's rule. It's mainly for these these two here. I should draw two arrows. It's mainly for this and this. And these two, they kind of become this. So the official rule is for these two, it's for when you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And I'll show you, well, this example it will be infinity minus infinity. And I'll show you how we can just kind of turn it into one of these. And that is why here we have, look, it's the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals zero. That will, that will make this into the limit of zero, the limit as x approaches a. Um, that would give me the limit of this whole thing would be zero over zero. And similarly here, um, f of x, g of x equals, the lim if the limit is infinity, I'll get infinity over infinity. And what we say is that that equals the limit of the derivatives. Now I'm not gonna pr uh, prove this, but I'm gonna kind of explain it br briefly because it's, it's kind of intuitive in a way. And I'm going to go straight to this example to kind of explain it. So imagine we have um, 4x over e to the x. And I want to find the limit of this as x approaches infinity. So I want you to imagine. Imagine x is, well, sometimes I prefer to just use a, use a number that we can understand. Imagine x is a million. If x is a million, not even a million, like a hundred. If x is a hundred, the numerator is 400. And e to the power of 100 is an absolutely massive, massive number. So what happens is this guy is approaching infinity, or he's getting bigger and bigger, way, way faster than this guy. Hence, what is useful, or what I want to know is, the rate of change of this function compared to this function. And we'll see, and that's what this this part of it is, if I get the derivative of this, so I, uh, the derivative of, of these two, so I can say the limit, I can say the limit of this is equal to, using L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of this, which is 4, over the derivative of e to the x, nicely, is e to the x. Now, so if you subbed in 0, if you sub infinity in here, you get 4 times infinity is infinity, and e to the power of infinity is infinity. So you get infinity over infinity. Which is, which is a problem. I don't know what infinity over infinity is. But I know that, look, this, this guy is approaching infinity way slower than this guy. So the rate at which it gets to infinity is important, and that's why I get the derivative. And now I can say that this is equal to this, and if I sub in infinity now, I get 4 over e to the power of infinity, which is 0. So the limit of this is 0. When you write that, it's it's always nice to kind of just write, like in an exam, you just write L'Hopital, like that. That kind of explains to the examiner, you know what you're doing. Now, I just want to show you graphically. There, that was my little bit of research on L'Hopital. Um, I want to show you graphically what I mean. So there's 4 to the power of x. Fine, it's it's getting steep pretty quickly. It's approaching infinity. So when x is 1000, this guy is 4000. But wait till you see e to the x. He approaches infinity way faster. In fact, look at it. 
you can barely even see it. It's just go, it goes so quickly up towards infinity. So four times a hundred is four hundred. E to the power of a hundred is two point six eight to the power times ten to the power of forty three. So it's like two with forty three zeros after it, bigger than that. Um compare that to 400 obviously that's a lot bigger hence we get hence we get zero that's what we does rule okay the next one i want to look at is the limit of sine x over x as x approaches zero now this is actually quite an important limit it's so important that it's sometimes called the fundamental trigonometric limit and what we have is a situation where it's, well, as x approaches 0, we get sine of 0 over 0. And sine of 0 over 0 is 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form, this one. And it's undefined. We can't, we can't figure it out. But if you actually graph sine x over x, and I'll, and I'll do that in a second, you'll see clearly that it actually approaches 1. Let's actually show you that. I want to show you the graph first. So... Let's get rid of these two. So imagine I have sine x over x. Let's go home here. So you have here's your here's your function sine x over x, and it's clearly approaching. Let's actually zoom in here. As x approaches zero, so as we approach zero here we are approaching one. So my x is approaching zero and my y is approaching one. But wait till you see, when I get to one, what happens? When I get to, well, when I get to zero, I mean, when I get to zero, he's just rounding it here, I get, it's undefined, right there, right at that point, there is a hole. That's why you see a gap or a hole in the graph because the function doesn't exist there because it's undefined. Okay, so now after showing you that, I want to show you how um, how the uh, how we'll use L'Hopital's rule to get that limit of one. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of what's the derivative of sine x? Well, it's cos x, the derivative of sine x is cos x and the derivative of x is 1. So this equals the limit as x approaches as x approaches 0 of cos x over 1 is um, cos of 0 cos of 0 over 1. And what's cos of 0? it is one, so one over one is one. And again, write, look, normally I'd advise you to go, go down here, but write it as, write L'Hopital like this. Again, show the examiner what you're doing. Okay, final one, final one, is this more complicated one. It's not clear that it's L'Hopital's rule that I need to use here. So as X approaches one, what happens is this whole thing approaches infinity because x is approaching 1 here, which means the denominator is approaching 0, which means 1 divided by 0 is approaching infinity. And as x approaches 1 here, ln of x is approaching 0, which means, again, we've 1 divided by 0 or something approaching 0, which gives me infinity. So I have an infinity minus infinity situation. I can't get the limit. I can't sub 1 in here. It doesn't give me anything meaningful. But I can apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, Let's let's to be clear. Let's be clear. L'Hopital's rule was for infinity over infinity or zero over zero. Now I don't have that here, but what I can do is I can kind of just rearrange this. So this is the limit x approaches one of. So I'm going to make a I'm going to make a fraction a common a common denominator here. So I'm going to have x minus one times ln of x, and I'm going to do this times this, which is ln of x minus x minus 1, if you like. Okay, hopefully that's 
hopefully you can do that okay now i want to well i could simplify this a little bit but let's actually leave it what i now want to do is i want to say the limit of this so do i have if i sub in one here do i have zero over zero or infinity over infinity well if i sub in one i get zero here if i sub in here i get zero so i get zero over zero no sorry i get zero in the numerator and then if i sub one in here i get zero so i, I have I have zero over zero, which means I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to say uh, the limit as x approaches one of, now L'Hopital's rule tells me that the limit as x approaches a, if the limits are approaching, if, if I have this zero over zero or infinity over infinity, which I do, I can then get the derivative. So the derivative of ln of x is one over x, minus the derivative of x is 1, and then this is nothing because it's constant, and the derivative of the denominator is, now you have to use a product rule here, so that's u times u times dv dx plus v times du dx, which would just be 1. So it's this. Now, and again, I'll write, I'm going to write L'Hopital here. L'Hopital. Okay. Now what do I have? If I sub in 1 here, I get 0. If I sub in 1 here, I get 0. And if I sub in 1 here, I get 0. Right. Good. So I chose this example um, deliberately because, well, 1, it's hard. 2, it's one of these ones that you have to rearrange. And 3, I wanted to show you that you can use L'Hopital's rule twice or three times. You can keep going. If you keep getting 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you can keep um, differentiating. So I'm going to differentiate again. This is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of the derivative of this is minus 1 over x squared. That's just because it's x to the minus 1 times by minus 1, bring down the power. This is 0, the derivative of minus 1, all over. Let me just fix this up a bit. I'll put it in the bracket after. So it's minus 1 over x squared. I'll leave that here. Here I need to use the product rule. Or I could just multiply it out. That would probably be easier. That would be um, that would be 1 minus 1 over x. So that would be 0 minus 1 over x. Um, Okay, guys, I, I don't like skipping loads of steps, so I'm going to do this properly. Um, I'm going to leave this. I'm just going to rearrange it. This is 1 over x minus 1. So I'm not differentiating here. I'm just um, rearranging. x times 1 over x is 1 minus 1 over x plus ln of x. Okay, now I'm going to rearrange. Oh, sorry, now I'm going to differentiate. So x approaches 1. The derivative of this is minus 1 over x squared. That disappears. I'll put that in the middle. And the derivative of this is 0. That is 0. The derivative of this, I'll get rid of that, is plus I'm going to have minus minus, so that's plus 1 over x squared. And the derivative of this is 1 over x, so it's plus 1 over x. Close bracket. And now I can sub in my 1 here because I'm going to get minus 1, so that's minus 1 and the numerator, over 1 plus 1, which is 2. So the limit of this whole thing as x approaches 1 is negative 1 over 2. And I'm actually going to show you, well, I want to see that I'm actually right, but I also want to show you um, this graphically. So it's 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over ln of x. So 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over ln x. Now if I zoom out, we'll see 
as x approaches, let's go here, as x approaches 1, y approaches negative a half, but again, right at negative a half, or right at 1, it is undefined. Okay, nice. I've, I'm actually quite happy there because that means I know I got it right and I don't have to do this video again. Great. Okay, I will see you guys in the next lesson. Have a good day.